Hello and welcome to this special sidebar module for our HEAL courses. Uh, I'm Dr. Tumi johnson Shogerton, and the topic I'm going to be talking about is hypertension in black people, which is something that's very, very dear to my heart uh, from a professional standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint, as I myself was diagnosed with hypertension at the age of 27. At the time, um, I was having headaches um, and I went to see my own doctor and was we took my blood pressure and to our shock it was over 190 over 110 um, and that was just such such a big shock uh, and when we go through this course of this talk you will see how how lucky I was because I could have stroked out or had one of the other horrible complications of uh, very severe high blood pressure um, and you know, I was I didn't have any other risk apart from being black. Uh, there was a family history, but no one in my family had had high blood pressure before the age of 40. So, you know, it does happen. I am I'm evidence to that. And I've been taking medication ever since then and obviously made some lifestyle changes. So that's why I'm here to talk to you about it, because I know about it from a professional and from my own lived experience and I'm telling you what I know and why this is so important in order to help you and other members of your family as well uh, pick up on hypertension early in order to stop uh, the problems later on in life. So let's just go straight in. What is hypertension? It elevated blood pressure which damages the arteries it's like high water pressure in pipes if we imagine that the pipes are our blood vessels so it's abnormally high blood pressure that's the de definition of the clinical word hypertension and it's measured in millimeters of mercury which is that mmhg that you can see on the screen now we have to define what is normal so normal, uh, so the top number is called the systolic, it's 90 to 119, some might say 120. Diastolic is 60 to 79, some might say 80. Now, this hypertension classification is by the American Heart Association and 100 to 129 systolic and a diastolic of 60 to 79 is considered to be elevated. So we're not, that's not that's elevated kind of like an at-risk uh, category hypertension is diagnosed from 130 to 139 systolic or a diastolic of 80 to 89 so that is considered to be stage one hypertension now stage two is 140 uh, 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 and above systolic or greater than 90 diastolic that would be stage two and 180 or above systolic and or a diastolic of greater than 120 is considered to be a hypertensive crisis which is what i was in when i was originally diagnosed and you need to seek immediate medical attention if you get that kind of reading now it's important to know the classifications because it does guide as to whether you should be started or treatment or not. Now there are other risk uh, classifications that doctors might do, but for black people, I would say if you have stage one or stage two uh, hypertension, you should really consider being on medication to lower that blood pressure. You can obviously try lifestyle uh, first to see if it brings it down if you make lifestyle changes but if it doesn't come down with lifestyle changes alone then we should really consider medication now how do we check or diagnose blood pressure so you can get it checked at your doctor but generally speaking one-off reading doesn't tell us that much so we recommend that you get a blood pressure machine at home and you can monitor your own blood pressure so it would be something useful to do say every six months or annually um, so if you get a blood pressure machine what what we advise that you do is you do three readings in one sitting discard the first one and record the lower of the of the last two so you do that morning and night and you can do that for up to seven days if you're doing a seven day monitoring. But if you do a one off reading, if you don't already have blood pressure, if the one off reading is fine, then that's fine. Uh, but you could do a seven day monitoring if you already have blood, high blood pressure and you're monitoring your response uh, to medication. So let's move on from that. Um, now. 
there are some important peculiarities of high blood pressure in black people. The first thing is that there's a higher prevalence, which means there's a higher percentage of black people who would have high blood pressure. And we know that genetic factors make a role, might play a role, but something that's really, really important is that sensitivity to salt. So it's the sodium in salt, but also food enhancers used in the African and the Caribbean communities that have, and black communities in general, to be honest, that have uh, so sodium or monosodium glutamate in the seasonings that can raise higher average uh, blood pressure because black people are just more sensitive. But then we also see that with treatment, black people respond better to certain medications, so like calcium blockers, calcium channel blockers and diuretics. And we're going to talk a bit more about that shortly. Now, What's also really alarming is that treated but uncontrolled hypertension is higher in black people. This means that people are on medication, but they're not quite in target range. So what is target range? When you have high blood pressure and you're on treatment, we want to see a systolic of less than 135 and a diastolic of less than 85. So that's 84 or less, 134 or less. Um, Anything higher than that, we're, we're going to say that the treatment is insufficient and you either need to add in additional lifestyle changes or add in additional medication. Now, and some might even argue that even lower should be used for black people just because of how high risk high blood pressure is. Now, high blood pressure is known as the silent killer and usually it has no symptoms, but very high levels of hypertension can cause headaches, it can cause visual disturbances, it can cause uh, shortness of breath, it can cause nosebleeds. And so if you haven't had nosebleeds in the past and you start having nosebleeds, it's very important to check the blood pressure. Same thing for if you get a, a, a bleed in your eye and you haven't had that before, again, check your blood pressure. Dizziness, chest pain, fatigue. Now, all these symptoms are non-specific, but if you do uh, have have them it's really important to check your blood pressure if you're just feeling generally unwell check your blood pressure because you never know you might be like me and your blood pressure is super high so hypertension can cause big problems in the body so it can cause problems so we talked about vision problems that that can be a sign of hypertension but when someone has had prolonged hypertension it can also cause problems that can in fact even lead to blindness it can cause problems with the the the, the arteries that go to the legs so that that means that the blood flow in the legs is not great and that can cause calf pain uh, calf pain that's a condition known as caudication it can cause increased risk of strokes and strokes are particularly debilitating because they can leave people with disability but they can also cause death uh, sustained high blood pressure for, for prolonged periods can cause kidney failure um, and that may lead, lead people needing dialysis or kidney transplant. It can also cause heart failure. It can put people at higher risk of a heart attack. Uh, it can cause vascular dementia. That's the type of dementia that's caused by having little problems with the small vessels in the brain uh, due to high blood uh, and that can be caused by high blood pressure. It can also cause sexual dysfunction because of poor blood flow to the penis. So generally speaking, it can cause really big problems with blood flow and that's why it causes a whole raft of problems all over the body. So really important to catch it or nip it in the bud because hypertension is completely treatable uh, for most people with, uh, with lifestyle changes or medication. Now, what are these lifestyle changes? So, reducing salt intake. And for the black population, I cannot overstate this. So we're going to be talking about it a bit more about what 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 can, what can we use. I know we generally try to like, tend to like flavorings in our food. We don't want to be eating bland food, but salt is, is not our friend. It really isn't. And it's that salt that very much drives the hypertension in black people. So we need to drastically reduce our salt intake. And I'll talk to you about some alternatives in the next slide. We um, also need to be increasing our physical activity because 
doing regular exercise helps lower blood pressure and it's, it's it's the aerobic exercise of getting your heart pumping but you don't you, you you can build it into your lifestyle just walk walk more frequently you know it, it, even if it's 10 20 30 minutes a day whatever time you've got just sit less walk more uh if you can do some running if you can do some swimming if you can join a class if you can play a sport whatever you can do to build it into your lifestyle so that you are taking regular exercise reduce your alcohol intake make sure that you're drinking within uh 14 units a week and no more than that making sure that we eat a healthy diet and that's very tied into making sure that we try and lose weight because when you're heavier it can increase your risk of and also the impact of high blood pressure so trying to lose some weight can really be impactful and healthy diet i know a lot of people think that eating a healthy diet is expensive but there's so many amazing ideas on the internet on how you can eat healthy food on a budget so a range of fruits and vegetables eating protein eating carbohydrates making sure that we have a balanced healthy and rich nutritious diet um and also thinking about our portion sizes, you can get things on to, to measure your portions, um, or, you know, in shops and things, um, just to make sure that you're eating the right, that you're not eating too much, uh, especially of the carbohydrates and the foods that will help, will make you gain weight. And if you smoke, please give up smoking because it's so bad for your blood pressure, but it's also also all the other complications will be worsened by smoking so now just thinking specifically about the salt so i know many of us this is a problem i don't like tasteless food well there are things that you can do that are considered to be better than just using regular table salt so pure pink himalayan salt is considered to be less high in sodium and you can use that as an alternative but please I didn't say baptize the food in uh, Himalayan salt or pour so much on it. Use everything in moderation. You can also try the low salt uh, alternatives. Uh, so those have uh, less sodium uh, content uh, and so you can try those sorts of salts as well but again in moderation and these because uh, a lot of us use food cooking stock cubes or mixed seasonings in our African or Caribbean uh, cooking or uh, and, and, and those kind of uh, seasonings can be very high in MSG and salt. So there are some zero salt alternatives and so nor do uh, some fantastic cubes that have zero salt. Um, and then also Calo have a very low salt um, organic uh, stock cube uh, that you can use as an alternative. So there are uh, quite a few different medications that can be used to manage high blood pressure. And I thought it was important to try and talk through these so that you get a sense of what we as doctors or as pharmacists or nurses that are advising you on your blood pressure, what is in our toolbox when it comes to medication. So we would always advise lifestyle changes, but for some people that's insufficient and we need to start your medication. So number one in the UK is usually a calcium channel blocker. Uh, so you might have heard amlodipine or philodipine and in fact amlodipine is the medication that i'm on so they're very good at lowering blood pressure uh so sometimes they can cause swelling in the legs um and that can be a side effect and if that's something that happens and is intolerable then you might want to change into something else now diuretic these are uh, tablets that drive water out of the body and by doing that also drive salt out of the body they're also considered to be quite good for black people and they're widely used in africa and the caribbean uh for for managing uh high blood pressure and some of that is also because they're they're, they're relatively cheaper um now uh some of those drugs include indapamide, benzophimethiazide. Now, with uh, the diuretics, they can make you pee more, so just be mindful of that. Um, so, best taken earlier on in the day. Um, now, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, also known as ACE inhibitors like Ramapro and Lisinopril, are very good at um, lowering blood pressure, but also they're 
protective of the kidneys. So if you have problems with your kidneys, that might be added in to just provide that extra support. Um, they're also given to people who might have had a problem with the heart or have heart failure. Um, angiotensin II receptor blockers are very similar to the ACEs, uh, that's the ACE inhibitors, and um, can be used then as an alternative to them. But sometimes the ACE inhibitors can give a cough. And again, in those circumstances, one, um, the uh, angiotensin II receptor blockers can be tried. So the examples of these are losartan, candosartan, and drugs like that. Now, beta blockers are also used. Um, not usually used alone, but can be used in combination, um, especially if there's a heart problem, heart failure or heart disease, because they can reduce the workload on the heart. Um, and so examples of this are things like atenolol and bisoprolol. Now, I mentioned that combining medications may be necessary. And so sometimes we use one, two or even three, sometimes even four of these uh, sorts of medications uh, to help reduce uh, blood pressure um, in people. And that's because it's far more important that you are at target. So don't say, ah, I don't want any more medication. If you're not at target, you need more medication or lifestyle changes because there's no point being on treatment if your blood pressure is still not controlled because you can still then get the complications of high blood pressure. So I'm begging you, take the medication that's prescribed for you and listen to your clinician whether it be your doctor your pharmacist your nurse um, or whoever is treating your high blood pressure so just to wrap things up I've mentioned that it's really important to monitor your blood pressure regularly. So for those who don't have high blood pressure, you should check six monthly to yearly just to make sure. And I'd say you should start doing this at least on the age of 40, but younger if you've got family history and you're black, because as you say, as I said, you know, you can get it earlier. Um, and then um and if you do have high blood pressure diagnosed, make sure you adhere to the treatment plan and engage with your clinicians. Let them know if you're having any problems so that they can make changes. Don't just stay at home and, and not take your medication because you, you didn't like the side effects. Go in, go and have a conversation, you know. Uh, visit when you are called in for your review. Usually that's six months to annually. And take your records with you. You keep your own register and I said you can do seven day uh, blood pressure readings every six months ahead of your review to show your GP that would be so helpful and also puts you in control of your of your own blood pressure management and as I say understand the side effects of your medication and if you're having any problems when to call the doctor but also the complications so if you're having any problems you make sure you get checked usually here in the UK you get checked for your kidney and you'd have blood tests annually as well so we're at the end of the conversation obviously I can't cover everything there is to know about hypertension but I hope that I've started to I've given you a starting point to be able to understand about hypertension in black people and what is important to know. So thank you so much for listening. If you like the video, subscribe, share, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye then.